Only, only two years back, we adopted pathways. And the last year, hybrid meetings and online meetings became a norm. And yet, uh, there are several things we can learn about holding hybrid meetings. It is now challenging for us, for our adaptive leadership to adapt to these developments. And we definitely need help. And I would like to start by introducing each, all of you do the self-introduction. Tell us who you are, your position in the Toastmasters, and which club you are from. And then we will, I will introduce the chief guest. Heather, Heather Perkins. I am, as mentioned, your district director, distinguished Toastmaster Heather Perkins. I am a member of Schooner Toastmasters in Halifax, of Toast of the Coast Advanced Toastmasters in Dartmouth, and of East Hans Toastmasters in Enfield, all in Nova Scotia. Thank you. Crystal Cobb. Thank you, Madam Division Director. My name is Crystal Cobb and I am your Program Quality Director. My home club is the Charlottetown Toastmasters Breakfast Club in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. And I'm also a member of the Spotlight Advanced Toastmasters. And when we're in person, we go between New Brunswick and PEI, but we are online currently. Awesome. You. Welcome. Gary, Gary Belding. Thank you, Madam Area Director. Gary Belling, Distinguished Toastmaster from Fredericton, New Brunswick, President of Civil Speakers Toastmasters Club and Treasurer of Rise and Shine Advanced Toastmasters. Thank you for the invite this evening. Wonderful. Aaron, Aaron Stephenson. Thank you, Madam Area Director. I'm Aaron Stephenson, President of Fredericton Toastmasters. And uh, yeah, whole new experience, learning about what's going on at the higher levels. <laughs> Barb Bell. Hi, I'm Distinguished Toastmaster Barb Bell. I'm VP of Education and Secretary for Sackville Toastmasters 4588, and that's in Lower Sackville in Nova Scotia. Awesome. Welcome. Robert? Good evening, fellow Toastmasters. I'm Mary Governor and everybody. My name is Robert Van Ostrud, Distinguished Toastmaster. I am the VPE for Riverside Toastmasters in Fredericton, and I'm also a member of the Advanced Rise and Shine Club in Fredericton. Thank you. Wonderful. Heather, Heather Airport. Hi, my name is Heather Urquhart. I am the secretary of the Civil Speakers uh, Toastmasters Club in Fredericton, New Brunswick. And I'm feeling like I'm not, uh, I'm not as well versed in Toastmasters as you folks, because you belong to so many other groups and I just belong to one. <laughs> Wonderful, welcome. Uh, Carl, Carl Dwenst, uh, Dewey Van Woorden. Did I say it right? Oh, pretty close to me. <laughs> yes. Hi, everyone. Carl Diamond Borden, DTM here. Mm -hmm. I am the VP of Education of both Civil Speakers and Rise and Shine Advanced Toastmasters Clubs this year. I had a wonderful time this morning with Civil Speakers Toastmasters, and they were very hospitable, and I had fun, a lot of fun. Thank you. All right, now we come to the main event. John Beam. I'm very proud to introduce John Beam to all of you. He is from District 58 Toastmasters. He has been a member since 2010 with Floor Club. Those of you who know Greenville will know about Floor Company. It's a huge company and it has supported Floor Club for many years. And the Floor Club, actually there are two clubs and they have always been uh, top notch in their Toastmaster achievements. He is a member of the Floor Club and he served as a club officer 
and also area roles. John's primary club, Floor Toastmasters, is a corporate club and introduced both virtual and hybrid meetings several years ago as a way for members to stay engaged and connected with the club when assigned to projects away from the club, from the office. Recently, John put his expertise to the test, leading the technology team for the District 58 annual conference, which was hosted as an hybrid event. John will be sharing his experience in using technology in successfully hosting and participating in virtual and hybrid meetings. John Beam. Thank you, you so much, Subi. Uh, also, thank you to uh, my fellow Toastmasters and officers for the opportunity to present to you today uh, regarding the nuances and mechanics of successful club meetings in a virtual or hybrid environment. It is something that's fairly new to, to most of us, but it's starting to begin to be the new norm. So a couple of things up front, I'm going to go ahead and share a screen. So the screen should change. And before I do that, uh, just a, a couple of added tips. One of the things I do when I'm hosting virtual meetings, uh, you will see that I've got a, a, a second feed that I've dialed into and it says John Beam's iPad. I'm going to go ahead and rename that. One of the things you can do in, in Zoom or many of these platforms is rename yourself. Uh, you click on the three dots up in your name and then uh, rename. And I'm just going to hit that uh, virtual host. So when you're doing a club, if you have a second device, it works as a confidence monitor. And it allows you to, to see what's going on from your, your regular screen or you see what everybody else sees because the primary screen, when you're interacting with Zoom, especially if you only have one screen, uh, you lose focus of what everybody else is. So that's just one thing that I do is log in with the second device, uh, especially if I'm the, the TMOD so I can see what else is going on. So we'll start with that and then I'll share a screen here. And you should be able to see what's going on there. And then what I'll do with my, my iPad here. The other thing you can do is monitor audio. If you have headphones plugged in, but you wanna make sure that you're muted. For this call, what I've done is went ahead and, and canceled the audio. I'm gonna switch cameras here, get a quick light. And uh, for me, I've got multiple cameras set up. So uh, you can see what, what I see here. So if I close, Close the chat and close the participant window. There you go. So now I can see the same thing everybody else is seeing on my little confidence monitor here. All right, so what are we doing with virtual meetings now? Uh, we've, we've come a long ways and over the last hundred years, in-person meetings has been the heart of Toastmasters. Second, let me get that other camera back. Uh, unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, many clubs have been unable to continue with in-person meetings. Many of those clubs stayed active by running virtual meetings. And as the world is beginning to open back up, Toastmasters International is expecting many clubs to begin hosting live in-person meetings again but for some, there's another option, and that's the hybrid meeting. And I'd like to just focus my time on providing some helpful advice to ensure that your club is equipped to hold successful hybrid meetings. So we'll talk a little bit about virtual meetings, but more on the hybrid meetings throughout the, the next uh, 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes or so. You may know that there's a distinct difference between virtual and hybrid meetings. A virtual meeting is when people use video, audio, and text in order to meet together in an online environment to share information, experiences, and data in real time without the need for being physically located in the same room together. It's really how many of our Toastmasters 
meetings have been successful over the past year. Whereas a hybrid meeting is a, a live meeting forum that is joined by other participants remotely. And this is enabled by audio or video conferencing technology with a strong focus on content sharing. And most of us have been participating in club meetings virtually, but as we anticipate this shift towards hosting live in-person meetings, as well as hosting this concurrent virtual meeting for remote participants as this hybrid meeting. But the key to this uh, with meeting hybrids is safety and the, the safety of those that are uh, in, in person and also for the safety of persons virtually. And we'll, we'll talk about both of those. Before hosting a hybrid club meeting, you, we do wanna ensure that you're following all your local guidelines regarding in-person gatherings because the safety of your club members should always be the first priority. It's not about membership, but we do wanna keep everybody safe. With the physical event, uh, it starts early and you must make a strong first impression because what you don't wanna do as we're opening things back up is make people feel at risk because it's gonna turn people away from what, what Toastmasters is all about. And that is building membership. During the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, virtual meetings played a key role in keeping our clubs running since face-to-face -face meetings in many cases were prohibited. Uh, virtual meetings being the next best thing. And for a few months, it seemed like nobody was gonna go back to meeting in person. But after the novelty of virtual meetings uh, has begun to wear off and Zoom fatigue is starting to kick in, most people have been longing for the time when our traditional meetings would come back. And now that these in-person meetings are slowly starting to, to come back, uh, if you're the host, it's important that you keep your attendees peace of mind and safety at the top of your list. And for Toastmasters, this is our chance to make that virtual first impression by ensuring people feel safe in returning to the meetings. So we wanna to adhere to those uh, local health protocols, whether it's a state, a province, the national or facility requirements, we wanna we want to keep those in mind. You wanna have personal protective equipment accessible. So if people show up, have hand sanitizers, face masks, you know, other, other shields or, you know, being able to socially distance, whatever it may be, but set those expectations early on. It's really good to send out what those requirements are in writing before the meeting so that people come in, understand, you know, does your meeting require everybody to have face coverings or are face coverings optional when they get to the lectern? Uh, just explain those up front or before the meeting. It's, it's a good way to, to do that is just to, to communicate that. We wanna understand the use of space. This has changed from our, our previous way of meeting. Uh, not everybody now will feel comfortable with going back to a closed meeting room. So the best way to accommodate most people is to provide them the option of choosing the setting where they're most comfortable. Some people feel better if the meeting was broadcast to an open space, such as a foyer or a, a larger venue, where others would prefer to have access to the meeting while outdoors, and others yet would still don't feel comfortable meeting in person, and they would prefer to attend the meeting virtually from their home office or from their automobile or, or wherever else. Uh, people are able to attend virtually from, from literally anywhere. And as it's, it's intimidating for some people, it's also true that there's many ways to stay safe. So schedule and coordinate the cleaning of your facilities before and after the meeting. And it's always good just to get people involved with that. Sometimes we, we have people volunteer just like you do for sergeant at arms, but somebody else that's gonna come in and assist with cleaning and sanitizing. Uh, we've called them the sanitation officer you know, the, the COVID monitor, whatever it may be, but making people feel comfortable and, and taking that on so that, that uh, it's, it's cognizant, it's something we think about and we're not just putting it in as a second thought. We're, we're keeping that at the forefront.
the technology requirements for hybrid meetings requires a little bit of work. An online meeting platform that allows for online participation is, is paramount, whether that's Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Hangouts, there's a number of different platforms out there, but you need to find one that works for your club. Sometimes it just depends on the region or the preferences or the platforms that people have access to. Uh, there's, there's many different platforms out there. The second is a webcam. You want to ensure that your online participants can view the speakers area if possible. And this may be uh, that you'll have to set up a camera. And I like having a camera on the lectern. And this is where having multiple devices comes in handy is you can put a somebody's cell phone or iPad up on the lectern. So you get a much closer shot of the individual that's presenting. And for, for my system, I've got the ability to, to switch to various cameras. So I can, I can switch my, my camera roll and, and have something here. So if I have a guest speaker, I can, I can move to a different camera. Uh, just depends on your, your requirements. Another option, if your, your club has the funds to do so, or maybe your corporate club is having a, a pan tilt zoom camera. These are, are nice because you can actually program them with the various positions if you're sitting around a table. So if, if a speaker's there, then you can switch to, and the, the, the camera will automatically go to that location. So if you want to get fancy, you can, you can get fancy with it. Um, otherwise, uh, just use various devices. Uh, you want to ensure for adequate lighting. When whether you're you're presenting, especially from the virtual area, you want a well lit area. If I were to turn off this front light, uh, I get I get really dark, and if the lectern were back here, you completely lose facial expression. And if I don't have adequate top lights, uh, you know, you your lighting changes a lot of dynamics in in the room. So you want to be aware of what your lighting is, not only at the at the live space, but also for everybody that's that's presenting, you want to ensure that they have good lighting, they don't have distractions in the background. High speed internet connections are are always good. Uh, the the more bandwidth you have the better. And if anybody's been on a call, uh, we know that the things come and go, they drop out. Uh, it's just Part of the part of what we have to deal with on a on a day to day basis, but during the meeting, uh, you know whether you have the the phones, the laptops, the computers, you you need to to be able to get the the projected image, so a a camera, so that you're presenting to people as well as good audio. And for myself, I use a I use an external mic. For my audio, I don't like using the integrated laptop microphones because they, they tend to pick up too much ambient background noise. And it, it works. And when I'm using my iPad, I, I usually always use a, a headphone and, and mic adapter because it's just a much better, uh, much better experience for the person on the, on the other end. You also want to make sure that you have some way of collaborating because you you want to remember that you have two audiences. You've got the live in-person audience, and then you also have a virtual audience. But we need to treat them as one. So we're trying to get everybody interactive by having the iPad set up as the virtual host. Any question through the chat, uh, you can have a virtual host uh, that is relaying information to the TMOD. Uh, they can also relay timer information to remote participants, but you wanna have some way to collaborate, whether it's using the, the chat feature, the polling features. In some cases, we'll use breakout rooms if we're doing virtual contests that we can send people to a breakout room and then bring them in, uh, just like we'd send them out to another room in a live event. Uh, or you can use other email text uh, apps such as Discord 
Facebook, uh, you know, instant messenger, whatever it may be to, to send messages back and forth. But you want to detail those roles and responsibilities early on and that your remote participants are, again, have a way to remain actively engaged. So how do we do this? Like all good Toastmasters, it's through meeting practice and preparation. It just doesn't happen just like a live event doesn't happen. Your virtual and hybrid events don't just happen. Uh, whether it's your club meets every week or every two weeks, ours is a, a biweekly club. So we try to assign roles after each meeting. So we have at least two weeks uh, to solicit input for who's gonna speak, who's gonna fill a role. And we can send those meeting links out to all attendees, just like you'd send out a traditional in-person meeting link. You would then want to prepare and hand out all, all handouts in paper form for your live guests, but also have them available in electronic format for your virtual participants. Again, we want to feel, we want everybody to feel like an active participant. And we can't do that if the agenda isn't available in multiple formats. Before the meeting, uh, it's always good to start 10 to 30 minutes before the meeting. I think Subi and I were on about 30 minutes prior to the, the start of the meeting. Uh, it gave us a chance to test the equipment. You can open all of your files and documents so that you're not waiting until someone in, introduces you as a speaker to share your, your presentation. I had all of my, my presentation materials open and ready to go. And then you want to activate the meeting link so that participants can call in, they can test their equipment. I know for, for my system, if I go from Microsoft Teams, which is my work platform, to Zoom or to WebEx, my microphone settings and camera settings don't always play. So it's always good for me to log in early and test my microphone to make sure it's working. And it also gives you an ability to introduce yourself to one another, assist others before the meeting. Because some people may be intimidated with the technology or they don't understand all of the, the nuances and, and how all the features work. So if they log in early, it gives them a chance to, to interact. And it also gives us a chance to socially interact with one another, to check on each other's well-being, and, and just have those personal conversations prior to the start of the meeting. A couple of keys during the meeting is to ensure that the guest information is captured and shared. If you have a a live in-person guest, you want to let that virtual assistant transfer, you know, transmit that information in the chat feature to the other participants that are meeting virtually. And if you have a virtual guest, you want to make sure that that information's uh, transferred to the live participants. So again, engagement between the two audiences is key. If at all possible, you want to minimize transfer of devices from person to person. My preference is if people are speaking and they have a, a presentation that they send that to the uh, to the Zoom master, the Toastmaster of the day, whoever's controlling that, and then they can control the presentation. Uh, we're getting better and better at, at, uh, at handing off. And I think that's just because uh, from, from my standpoint, I've been using online collaboration tools for four or five years. So it's secondhand for me. To, to do that or to run somebody's presentation, but we're getting better at, at doing that ourselves without distraction. But if you can minimize the transfer of device control and sharing of information, uh, you'll eliminate the, the number of, of issues you'll have. The, the other thing with the virtual host for, for our club, who, whoever is sitting in that virtual host position is the designated troubleshooter. They're the ones that deal with somebody's internet connection uh, and they try to do that through a chat feature or it might be texting, uh, you know, mobily that they can't get in to the room or they're having an issue with audio. Uh, 
but one of the keys is not delaying your meeting due to technical issues. If you have a live in-person audience, you wanna to try to treat that as much as uh, the primary audience. And if somebody is having issues virtually, uh, let that, that designated troubleshooter coordinate with them. And the, the best thing to do if, if you're a virtual participant and you have issues, uh, you don't wanna come back in and say, oh, sorry, you know, I came back in, but uh, you know, I, I apologize for, for losing my connection. Just come back in. And many times when you log back in, the, the Zoom master, or that, that designated troubleshooter or virtual host won't let you back in until after the speech is done. So you're not going to have that entry tone or uh, your, your name's not gonna flash up or you won't have your, your microphone unmuted to cause a distraction for the speaker. So if somebody's speaking, uh, just be aware that if you do drop off and try to dial back into a meeting, you may have a delay uh, until there's a reasonable break. If you're presenting virtually and there is a problem with your connection, the Toastmaster of the day and the evaluators should take no action uh, for your connection. Just continue to watch. Uh, we're, we're getting used to audio glitches with the systems and you just have to let them roll their course. And the evaluator would be the one that would say, you know, during your speech, there were several instances that you came in and out. So you may want to look at your internet connections, but it's, it's just good, good etiquette, etiquette not to interrupt the speaker and, and let them continue on, let them keep their momentum and, and let the evaluator make those corrections uh, for, for that individual. As I've said before, uh, we also want to uh, set up redundant systems. So that's the other benefit of having my, my iPad set up, that if I have a problem with my primary system, whether it's my microphone, my, my headphones, my video, whatever it is, I can simply just lo either log out of it, uh, close it, turn off the camera, and move right over to my, my backup system. So I'm, I'm really big on having redundant system set up. Uh, you, you do want to designate how audio is handled to prevent feedback, especially in your live group. If you have multiple devices dialed in, uh, it can cause a lot of trouble with, with audio. If multiple devices are, are turned on, if I, if I turn the audio on the, on the iPad, uh, it's gonna want to, the speaker there is gonna be picked up by my microphone and then all of us would get this really unruly uh, feedback sound, which I'm, I'm sure all of us have heard in, a, in an auditorium, but it tends to be exacerbated with the, with the online programs. But we, we as Toastmasters, again, we, we plan for the worst and hope for the best. So we do wanna anticipate those worst case scenarios. And in the case that your connection goes sideways and you lose everybody, uh, please follow up with your remote participants. Don't wait until the next meeting. You know, send, a, send an email out, send a text message, whatever that line of communication is. You know, apologize for dropping the connection. Uh, we understand that it most likely is going to happen. It's not a matter of if, it's a, a matter of when. But just apologize, follow up with them, and see if there's anything else that we can do to try to alleviate that in the future. So with that, uh, I've been talking for a little while, so I'd like to just go ahead and open it up for uh, the opportunity for you to ask questions or uh, you know, share what, what you've seen is working or, or not working or, or best practices. So go ahead and open it up to the audience. Robert, I see a hand there. Find the unmute button first. Uh, we had a uh, hybrid meeting for uh, Riverside Toastmasters yesterday. We had a bit of problem with the uh, sound, with the microphones interfering with each other. And uh, so how would you recommend 
where would the, he said one microphone, but where would it be so it would capture the speaker and any, call, any uh, answers to questions from the audience, the rest of the club. So we, we found, and there I'm getting a little bit of feedback, uh, but I found from, from a speaker standpoint, if you have one microphone at the podium, uh, works good. If you're in a an office environment or where your club meets and they have the the conference speaker phones set up, uh, transferring all the audio, you know, turning all the device audios off and just using that that phone. Uh, we have the polycoms in the in the offices. Those tend to work better using the telephone connection for the to pick up all of the speakers in the room. If you don't have that ability, you know, you meet at a, a church location or uh, some other functional area where you're having to bring in all of your equipment. Uh, I like to set up one piece of equipment. And if you are doing table topics where you're expecting different people to be talking, uh, have the table topic master either contact the individual and as they're thinking about it, have them come up to the front of the podium. And so they're, they're at that one microphone instead of trying to, again, transfer devices. Because if you do that, you, you can, but you risk the, the feedback elements. And it's just a matter of uh, getting used to, to hitting the button. One of the things I like about my, my microphone is it's got Uh, right there. So as I'm transferring control of things, I, I can, I can mute the, mute the sound. So that's, that's what I've found is works the best. Uh, another way of doing it is having an individual dial in with a cell phone. And for some reason, I don't have my phone up here, but with the, the phone, if somebody's in the audience, you can, it's easier to pass the phone. So you're using that that speakerphone audio for the group. So that's another option. Great question. Anybody else? Go ahead, Carl. Um, I was going to ask you, John, thanks for all the info. And I was going to ask you, you mentioned that you have a system for switching between cameras. I thought that was intriguing. Maybe you could tell me a little more about that. You, um, let me see if I can't share this. So the the app, there's a couple of different applications out there. I've used this one for for a number of years. It's called ManyCam, M-A-N-Y-C-A-M. And see if I can't share my screen here with what this one does. So what, what Minicam does is it, is it fools the computer into thinking that this software application is a USB camera. And by doing that, I can, I can do a number of different things. I can, I can set up all these different camera feeds. So if I transition to, to this one, let's see if it's going to work. Uh, and again, if you're looking at my camera feed, you'll see that it's got uh, these these four different sections on it. Uh, I can go to to my my number my number two camera over on the side, which is just a standalone USB camera. And then it also allows me to do different things. I can put up banners. Uh, you know, I was running a, a training program, and I can do timers and and things like that in there. Uh, the other nice thing about this is I can have pre-recorded uh, information. So if I've got a, a video clip or something there, then I can switch to it and play that video clip right through the uh, right through the the player. This this software I picked it up. I think it was fifty fifty nine dollars or sixty nine dollars, something like that. There there are a lot of them out there now that are available. I know some coworkers that are using some different types of software. But if you just look for virtual camera software, uh, these, are, these are pretty handy. But they do, 
they do take a, uh, a lot of your, your CPU. So they'll, they'll, uh, they'll tax the, the CPU on your, your computer system. But again, this is called Minicam, M-A-N-Y-C-A-M. Great questions. Anything else? Good, Carl. Uh, strictly speaking, John, do you need to have that second, you have an iPad there, you called it a confidence monitor, I guess. Um, but do you strictly need to have that? We haven't tried hybrids yet, but we were going to, Gary and I are supposed to go to a meeting room and, and set it up with one of our members being uh, online just to see how it all works. And, and we did hear in the lead up to this, yeah, you'll need a second laptop. And that's simply that confidence monitor that's that what gives I use you a for. separate eye on the meeting essentially so you can yeah, see what it, they see yeah so that it, it does that uh depending on where your computer is set up if you're in a room that has a an external monitor now i was going to set one up in the background uh because many times when you're in a a a meeting room you'll have the the monitor in the back that may have the the person's presentation on it and it's it's really difficult if somebody's presenting slides as well like like I was uh, if you're in a live group then you've got the main screen that uh, during the meeting would have the the profile view with everybody uh, cascaded on it so you can see all virtual participants but during a presentation then that would show the slides for the people in the room and that's where that second monitor comes in handy uh, because the the person the lectern can see what's what's going on uh, they could switch the view to look at at the other participants uh, so it, it comes in handy having that second device go ahead gary yeah john i'm just wondering have you received any feedback from any clubs of what things that might go wrong or have gone wrong that we haven't thought of like little oh. hiccups maybe along the yeah, way i've, I've I've seen lots. Yes. Um, the, the one that that I think is that we're getting better at as a as a club that meets in a, a virtual and, and hybrid setting is is not interrupting the speaker. We were getting really bad about a speaker was going and they'd be you know talking and the bandwidth would go in and out and the TMOD or somebody else would say, "Oh, you're you're cutting out." We didn't get any of that. Yes, and it. And, and then the, the timing's off, the, the speaker's off. So we got in the habit and I actually presented to everybody uh, a, a speech that was designed on what to do when things go wrong. And so as I was speaking, I just my microphone. Speaking for about two minutes and then I had the evaluator go through and look, and they were able to, to still evaluate me on facial expressions, hand gestures, emotion, uh, posture. And, and if you go, we have that telltale sign at the end of the speech is, you know, handing it back over, uh, and then you just wait for that pause. So it, it helped the speaker not get distracted, but it also gave them valuable feedback as to, to when they, they dropped out uh, without, without being a distraction. So yeah, right, because everyone, everyone at home has a different system. So you're, and different, if you're in a remote part of the world, you're gonna have that issue with bandwidth and everything else. Yep. So that's what we have found in the past too, yes. Yeah, just just not being a distraction. Let them go, um, you know, for their their three to five minutes. And at yes. the end, uh, again, giving uh, instead of taking that two or three minutes, which pushes the meeting out. And we're we're always on a tight schedule. Uh, we we try to respect the one hour because we're a corporate club, so everybody's taking their lunch hour to go through the club. And and we found that that has really helped not not overextend the meeting. 
Thank you. We leave it with the evaluator. Great. And again, the, uh, taking the time before the meeting to, to set up and let people test, especially as uh, with, uh, uh, I guess, a, a private club or a, uh, a public club. That's what I was trying to think of. And it, as you get people in that are, are really hesitant about using an online collaboration tool, uh, if you either have a, a virtual meeting or somebody says, you know, as, as a mentor, I'll log in a half an hour early and I'll walk you through all the different components, uh, show people how to mute, how to unmute, and, and we, get, we get much better at it. Uh, another uh, tip that I found we were doing in the, in some of our contests is when we introduced the, the individual, they would, they would introduce, so this is, uh, you know, Gary Belding, if you would please unmute your microphone and test your audio, and then you would get that test, and it was, it was right there, and then the presenter would go into the rest of the introduction. You know, Gary's with this club, he's presenting this speech, and with that, you know, and that whole time you're unmuted and you're just ready to go. So when, as soon as your intro's done, you can go right into your speech without having to, uh, you know, to wait, unmute, start talking and realize that you're muted. Yes. John, when the change, uh, if you're using Teams versus Zoom, does that change the, the dynamics at all? Because Teams is another uh, format that some yeah. governments I know are using more Teams yeah, than Zoom. We're, we're using Teams. Uh, one, of, one of the fun things about Teams is the it's got a pretty good virtual background, so it will it will fade out everything behind you. And there's a, a mode on it when multiple people are in that's called, I think it's team mode or uh, team room or something like that. But it will take everybody into a virtual room so you can put them in an auditorium or in a coffee shop. And and it's, it's pretty fun because instead of looking at everybody's uh, unique backgrounds. It fades everybody's background out and puts them in one, one specific background. So it's it's kind of fun. Interesting. You may have I, seen commercials of it, but it's yes, it's a, it's a neat little concept. Well, I think it does have more features than Zoom. That's my understanding of it as well. Yeah. Yes. Um, you can actually do that with Zoom now as well. You can put people in an auditorium and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I know all all of these platforms are coming up with with more and more features. Robert, did you have a question? Uh, no, uh, just a note about the Teams. I haven't used it myself, but apparently there is a setting on Teams where you can shut off the incoming video. Say, I'm not taking the incoming video except for possibly a shared screen to lighten the load on your system. You know, if you're having a bandwidth problem. Yeah, I know. I know with. Uh, even with WebEx, if you're the if you're the host, you can turn off video feeds. So if you're having issues, and uh, and many times when when people are speaking, if you've got connection issues, uh, another etiquette thing is just for people to turn off their video feeds during a speech and just leaving the the speaker and the timer uh, are are pretty much the only two that are that are live feeds, and that that helps on bandwidth as well. So there's there's lots of things that that we're we're coming up with, and and learning again on a uh, almost a weekly basis. We're we're all new here. Heather, go ahead. Have you found a difference when it comes to the speakers, whether they're virtual or in person, when it like can can people can people online still hear the 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 in the person that's in the room you know and I know it it would all have to do with um, speakers and such as well but has 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 there been a preference from folks have you heard um, no the the way we've set it up uh, and that's that's mainly because when when I do the 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 live event I'll take a 
you know, like a, a microphone. It might not be this one, but I, I've got another, like a podcasting mic that will set up on the lectern. So it's, it's a good quality mic so that whoever's presenting up there, even if they're a few feet away, if they're projecting, it picks it up very well. So the virtual participants hear that. And we've had, we've had pretty good luck in coaching members through again, that's, it's just a conversation about, you know, it's, it's not preferable to have your, just use the, the laptop computer audio for, for your primary audio. Uh, if you've got that and you've just got a, you know, you might have a, a grammarian role or a small role that, that you can, you could talk about, but many times when you're, you're using that speaker, you hear the, you hear the fan, you hear the dog barking, you hear cars driving by. It's, it's a real dynamic mic. So I, I, we try to get people to use a, an external mic. A lot of the headsets that are, that are out there are really good at, uh, at picking up speakers. You just have to get used to, to wearing it. Uh, I pretty much feel like this is just a, uh, it's, it's like wearing my glasses now. And, and for me, uh, I, I prefer having one ear if, because these are noise canceling headsets. If I put them both on, then, then I feel like I'm in an isolation chamber. So that's why I, I end up with, with one behind my ear so that I can still hear, hear myself. Uh, and that's, that's my preference. So microphones are, uh, are getting, you know, there, there's a lot of choices out there. And even in, for, for virtual folks, uh, a lot of people just call in with their phone. So using the, the little headset mic works just fine. And we had one individual that, that did a speech the other day and they were outside and he used his, he had his computer set up with the video feed and just dialed in on his telephone with the audio feed and had his, had his earbud in and used the microphone. And he actually taught everybody the basics of Frisbee golf or yeah, of, of Frisbee golf, how it worked. And he was out in the park and he was running. He was, it was amazing because where the camera was set up, all of a sudden he ran 50 yards out and you still heard him perfectly. And nobody knew that's what he did. And, and so it was, it was a really great effect in the speech where uh, even in Toastmasters, we used somebody walking back this way, but not running all the way, you know, to the other end of the park to, to grab and then through a Frisbee. And, and he about hit the camera with, with the Frisbee. It was amazing, you know, when he, when he threw it. So uh, you, you can have some fun with that. Uh, but again, it's, it's just a matter of, of uh, knowing what the limitations are and, and what's going to work and what's not going to interfere with the, the rest of the program. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Subi, how about yourself? What have you seen from uh, from all the the various meetings you're having? What seeing things that are working or not working? The thing that uh, did not work in a club that I was attending, uh, the uh, hybrid meeting was, uh, I was in the virtual audience and I could not hear uh, whoever was speaking in the podium, unless that person was near the, uh, near the camera and near the microphone. Uh, that was a big problem for me because I was the evaluator, I could hear bits and pieces of the converse of the speech, but not the whole thing. And I apologize to the person that I could not hear all of it. And I judged her on based on body language uh, and other aspects of her talk. Yes, it is challenging. The camera and the microphone should be strong enough when you set it up in the podium. Am I right? There, there's again a lot of options. The uh, the microphone I'm using is a, a USB mic, so it just plugs into the computer. And if you've got a long enough cord on it, it's easy to to pass along the room. 
Uh, this is also set up with different modes. So it's currently set up that if I'm if I'm talking towards it, it works good. But if if you're behind it, it doesn't pick up the noise. Uh, there are other microphones that are more omnidirectional. Uh, I have a, a hockey puck mic that's that's about this big. It's also a USB mic. So if we're in a room, I can put that in the middle of the table and anybody that talks uh, that that will pick it up. So there's there's a lot of stuff out there and they're they're anywhere from the you know the 30 to 100 dollar range you can get a really good microphone for for your club so if you're if you're meeting as a club and and beginning to go virtual uh, i think it's worth uh, the investment of of a couple of hundred dollars from your your club account to to purchase some a good usb microphone and uh, potentially even a, a you know just having a a, a web based a good high definition camera that that you can just point around. So if you're doing table topics, you can you could just have one individual turn it to uh, nice. to highlight whoever's speaking. Yeah. I have an I have a question. Yes, Chris. Um. Do you have any tips and tricks for the Toastmaster to, to help them bridge the conversation and ensure that both the in-person and the online people are feeling part of the meeting? Yeah, for, for us, we've coordinated that through the, the virtual host. Uh, if, if I'm doing TMOD, I can, I can run both. And that's just due to, to many years of, of being able to multitask. And where, where we've done that is the, the virtual host is monitoring the chat function, which would be much, the, the, the nice thing about Toastmasters is most of it's just linear in nature. You don't get a lot of uh, ad hoc, a question in between. If you're, if you're getting ready to do table topics, uh, sometimes the virtual host will, will forward a name to somebody so that they're prepared for, for unmuting. So there's there's different strategies you can use. Uh, the chat feature is really good for, for sending uh, voting. If somebody's going to vote, they can send messages to that that virtual host and then they can pass the the iPad to the the ballot master. The other nice thing about having the the pad is if a uh, an individual that's timer gets the uh, gets asked to provide a table topic, then they can they can pass that to to somebody else to to time for them. So there's there's lots of efficiencies you can you can work into. How about the uh, projection of the online attendees in the room uh, so that people attending in person can see the people that are online? How do we project? Yeah, and what? So the the rooms that that I have the benefit of using for for our hybrid events, all have a, a large screen television in the front. Uh, we do have a couple of rooms that have multiple. If when when we first started going back and we were still required to have six foot distancing in the room, we use one of the larger auditoriums, and there they had multiple multiple screens in the front of the room. So one of them, we could leave the, the live audience or the, the virtual audience on one screen and then any presentation materials would come up on a, a second screen. And in, in some cases we've had the, the TMODs have created a complete slide deck with the, the, the agenda and then introductions for for each individual, you know, word of the day, and and so that's always up on the screen, as as uh, or something in the background, and and some people will even use it as a virtual background. Uh, I don't know if it's if it's an option in Zoom, but I think WebEx allows you to have your uh, PowerPoint presentation as a virtual background, which works nice for timers. Then they can just have a a PowerPoint show, so they're going from green to yellow to to red, 
and then it just goes to a, a blank, a white, and then green, yellow, red for, for that whole sequence. So there's, there's a, again, we're, we're getting more and more fancy with what we're doing, but it, it doesn't have to be that way. We can keep it simple. Uh, Zoom lets you use the PowerPoint slides as background. Okay. I have used yeah, I'm, it. I'm, uh, I'm not as big a Zoom user. But uh, I, I have used it a, a little bit. Any other questions? And uh, uh, another uh, that, that I like doing is just leaving the room open after the meeting instead of just, you know, turning everything off as, as soon as the meeting is adjourned, leave it on. And it's much like a, a traditional meeting where you can socialize and then it gives an opportunity for each virtual participant if they want to you know have comments with with people that are in the live event then it just gives them a chance you can kind of go around the room and before somebody signs off you know we could say you know is, is there something you want to present to the group or what's going on what are your accomplishments where are you in pathways uh, what are you planning on doing what's your next speech so try, trying to get people involved that way All good ideas. Wonderful presentation. Thank you very much, John. Yeah, it, was, it, it was enjoyable. Yeah. Any questions? Any further questions? How about Barb? Barb, I haven't heard from you. How's, how's all of this dirt? How's all this working? Uh, well, we tried our first, well, actually, it was our second hybrid meeting, but it was uh, the first full hybrid meeting last Monday. And uh, we had some glitches. Uh, we had some microphone issues where people couldn't hear. And uh, we have a lighting issue where the lighting just isn't, uh, um, doesn't seem to be working in terms of people online being able to see uh, properly. So we've, we've got some wrinkles to work out, but we're working on it. It's, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're baby steps. But we're learning as we go, and uh, uh, we need a better webcam. That became very obvious to us <laughs> on Monday. <laughs> so that's uh, that's the thing we we're working on right now this week is to see if we can uh, figure out something that works much better. I like the idea of having a uh, a second device logged in. We certainly will do that this next meeting um yeah we've, we found, we've found, found that, that, that problematic yeah we've we found that having having that second device is is really nice when you know somebody kicks the kicks the camera you know pulls the plug on the camera or does does something else um you, you can just fall right back on it without without too much undue yep. delay but the the biggest one is is uh we're, we're all learning so it's mm -hmm. a great way especially for us as a corporate club, we've have, have actually gained members because people want to learn how to use these collaboration tools better. Mm -hmm. And, and they're intimidated thinking, wow, in, in a couple of months, I have to, you know, present to a client or, you know, to, to a larger global audience. And, and I have no idea how to do this. So they've, they've come in and they're able to to present and use the tools in a in that non-threatening environment, and mm -hmm. with with all of you being familiar with Toastmasters, it's just a great atmosphere, and we've had good success in in advertising. Uh, what better way to learn? And mm -hmm. and my biggest promotion for for a corporate club is using Toastmasters as a professional development tool. Mm -hmm. If you think of going out and having to you know, buy a Stephen Covey book or attend a, a professional development session, you know, you might pay five, six, seven hundred dollars for a an online event and it's a one and done. And you you feel really good at the end of it. And then you've got no feedback, you've got, you know, it's all on you. So encouraging people to get involved with Toastmasters and for a hundred dollars a year, you get so much out of it. You know, not only the, the speaking skills, but the leadership skills, and you get to learn to interact with, with people from all walks of life.
And uh, tonight is just one one more example of that. So I really <laughs> uh, enjoyed your your company, and mm -hmm. I wish uh, all of you the best in in uh, your future endeavors with Toastmasters as we we continue to to charge through the waters of of implementing hybrid and virtual clubs. Thank you very much, John. A wonderful job. <laughs> Heather, you have Heather Perkins. You have any comments for John? I'd just like to thank you, John, for sharing your experience and expertise with us. It's something that a lot of clubs are trying to figure out. Many of us yet don't even have a place to meet in person, but we're still thinking about how we would handle an in-person meeting should that happen at some point. <clears throat> Of course, now that in some parts of our district, COVID cases are on the upswing again, that may be even further in the future than we had hoped. It is good. One of my clubs did one last summer, an outdoor one, and we had a very basic setup and it worked quite well. There are things that we would have changed, but it is certainly information that everybody is hungry for. And I really appreciate you taking the time to share it with the folks in area 13 tonight it's been my pleasure thank you very much john i appreciate your coming on my invitation and those of you who came from area 13 i appreciate your presence and your cooperation in mm -hmm. attending crystal it is a pleasure having you and heather uh, it made me feel very good that I have my higher ups with me. <laughs> it's a pleasure uh, to be with you guys. Uh, and uh, of course, it's a due time as Area 13 director. I don't have to emphasize all of you about the importance of collecting the dues. And uh, I'm sure you're all busy with that. Uh, and our next meeting is going to be on October the 21st. And we have a special speaker, which will be Jim Kakochi. So he has promised to say something uh, important. So we look forward to that meeting. Fellow Toastmasters, leaders, it is a pleasure. Adaptive leadership, that's what we are doing. We are adapting to changes. We are rolling with the punches and we are succeeding. And that is what I like about it. And John, I truly appreciate you are respecting my invitation and coming and helping me in this uh, endeavor. Thank you so much. All of you, good night. Have good a night. Safe night. Bye. Stay good night. safe. All. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. <laughs>